Hi everyone, my name is Houston Haynes, and I'm here in my studio to show you the Smart AV Tango console. In specific, this video is going to be looking at the extension bay and the basic operations across the Monarch channel ops area as well as the physical faders. So, let's take a look. So you'll see here is the Tango main unit with the extension bay on the right hand side. You'll notice that there is an aluminum billet that resides between the two. It looks like the end pieces, but is actually specially machined to connect the two. There are two grooves that are machined in the lower edge of the billet. It's bolted to one side, and the other side, the two screws are sent in so that you can then slide the two together. One of the first things that you'll notice is that the Monarch does go continuously across the top of both screens in sequential order. So instead of only having the 27 channels in view one, you now have 57 channels. You have an additional 30 channels. You can also add to the visibility by having, by going to view two, and view three, you'll see in this particular template it goes up to 138 channels, and the rest after that are grayed out. Um, but when you have a fully loaded template, you can see over 200 channels in this particular view. Notice also that you have 20 channels that are loaded in the fader bank, so you actually have 20 channels that are highlighted yellow. And as you select in chair mode across the Monarch, it automatically loads and instantiates those channels into the fader bank. So you can continue on down the extension bay, and you can see that you also have the channels loaded. And the, the, the tw last 12 channels that you have here are the 12 channels that are loaded here automatically. You're also able to operate in wipe mode, where you can select a series of channels as you move down the line. So you have these disparate sets of channels that are loaded directly in front of you that you can work on, on them, even though they're not side by side in your track arrangement in your project, you have them directly in your lap where you can focus on the, the most appropriate tracks for a particular section whether you're working on a film or a music queue. For my particular purposes, I often work in view two with my default orchestral template because I have so many channels. And the first thing that I'll do is I will load, I'm gonna go ahead and set this down here and set back to chair mode. I'll go ahead and load the first 20 channels and I'll lock down the first eight MIDI channels. And the next thing I'm gonna do is go down here. You'll notice that once I put the hold on for these particular channels in the main console, the extension bay are the only channels that get loaded. So now whenever I touch an area in chair mode, it's only loading 12 at a time, and it's these 12. And that's because the eight on the main unit are being held. So I'll go to channel 77. And 77 I know is the beginning of my template for the VSTI outputs for the MIDI channels that I have loaded here. And the last thing I'm gonna do is load up um, two of my FX sends and two of my group channels. So I'm gonna hold my inject touch point on the extension bay and reach over here and select uh, the Revex Hall. I'm sorry, the Reverence, which is an impulse. Um, second one is Revex Hall. And I'm going to have to slide down just a little bit further. This is the LA Scoring Stage group, and this is the band group. Now, what I've done here is a nonlinear arrangement. You can see there's some VSTI outputs that are located here. Here are two uh, effects returns, and here are two other group channels. The group channels is the LA Scoring Hall, which is the uh, impulse plus some of the reverb returning for all of the orchestral instruments that are supposed to be in the room. And the last one is the band, which is all the other instruments that are in the arrangement that aren't part of the scoring hall. So now that I have this arrangement uh, in place, more or less, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my expert panel. I'm going to press the store button and store the track arrangement directly on the Monarch. So I'm going to reset so I have a brand new track arrangement, but when I want to go back to this, all I have to do is press recall, and all the UPO indicators along the Monarch, where I have a, a track arrangement stored, now lights up. So I, I press the recall, and they stay lit up, and all I have to do is touch one of those positions and it resets. The other thing I can do is use the expert panel to go back and forward using the undo and redo, so I can snap between track arrangements literally in a flash. And it instantly redirects whatever tracks I had pulled into the arrangement. So I can have audio channels in the first eight, and MIDI channels and group channels uh, on the right. I can have all group channels here to do a submix on the right hand side. It really just depends upon what I particularly want to do. So of course we move down the touch screen you can see all the channel ops that are available. It's just like the main screen. You have the input section which of course snaps to um, left and right pan, phase and trim for the input. Here's all the inserts which in this particular mode I'm in inserts plus. In the last two positions I actually show a couple of indicators where I'm actually looking at uh, the quick controls as well as the first six positions of the inserts. Because of my needs, I rarely go more than six inserts deep, so I like having this particular view so I can actually access the quick controls where I can route things, and I'll show in a later video how that works. 
Since I have a compressor instantiated, of course, the dynamics is now activated. And of course, the equalizer. And notice as I touch each of these sections, you'll see this area will highlight. I can go in and activate uh, the individual sends and turn those up. And then, of course, here in the output section, I not only have access to the panner, where I can grab the encoder and work here directly with the channel, but there's also areas here where I can reroute the output to one of the groups. And as you can see here, I have this routed to the alley scoring stage, where I can also route it to one of my mixes. The extension bay operates just like the main unit. You have this encoder, which by default, like looking at the output, you have the left-right pan, but you also have other things that are available to you where you can traverse down the line where you have sends that are active. You can continue to work with sends to balance out instruments in a mix, for example. You can also use this uh, to go into a particular area of EQ and work on um, specific things that, let's say for fun, that we're going to activate this. So now we're activating band 3 gain. So now we can go here and make a change here, but we can also, and immediately as soon as we touch this pot, it activates that channel and is working on the same parameter. So it's like you have an XY grid across these encoders, where as soon as you activate that particular parameter for that one individual channel, you can also go down the row very quickly and set those values um, in the rest of the channels that are loaded into the fader bank. Of course, you also have your solo uh, and inject touch points as well as your mute button. Um, a good example of, of how the uh, solo button will work for you is you're setting your solo for one individual position, and that's here on the rack XS, but it also goes through and sets the solo for the MIDI channels that are corresponding to it. This is part of the interaction between um, the, the tango and the intelligence of the host, where when I solo this individual track, not only does it solo that track, as the host responds directly to that, but because the MIDI channels correspond to this VST instrument that are part of this output, it also solos those channels. Likewise, since I have two sends that are active for this particular channel, it will actually go and solo those two returns. And then, of course, since I have routing going to both the um, to, to both groups, it will actually solo both of those groups as well. So, of course, when I clear that, I can also use the touch point to clear all the solos and all the mutes and so forth. So again, I'm working across the entire console, either directly accessing um, and acting on data directly here across the extension bay, or I'm using it in concert seamlessly with the main unit to operate across a huge number of tracks with relative level of facility. So that wraps up our introduction of the SmartAV Tango extension bay. As you can see, even with the basic functions across the Monarch, Channel Ops, and Physical Faders, you can greatly enhance both the width and depth that you can go into your mix and move your workflow even further forward. In a future video, we'll be looking at moving the edit panels over to the second screen, as well as how to program the macro buttons to further catapult your workflow and allow you to work even faster. So stay tuned for those videos, and as always, thanks for watching.